howdy neighbor how is your garden growing me my garden needs some help we need to get some more native wildflowers into that front yard where i lost a lot due to taking out that tree but luckily i'm here at sweet bay nursery where i'm going to be picking up tons of plants and of course i'm going to be taking you along with the adventure to help give you some inspiration for some native wildflowers and native plants that you can add to your garden and today i got joining me leah she's going to be helping me do all the impulse buying so that we can fill in this front yard garden leah for joining Ooh, me today welcome. yeah i'm excited <laughs> okay we're gonna go hunting she's gonna tell us about some amazing plants So the space that we have is, it's a south side of the house, pretty far from it. And it's, I would call mostly sun. It's got sprinklers that run twice a week. Got really rich soil, I will tell mm -hmm. you that. It's, I've dumped so much mulch on it over the years to kill the grass. Yeah. I just shaded everything out. So a lot of it wasn't doing great. And then the Ponciana one got ripped yeah, out. Yeah, Like kind of killed the last of it. So I'm looking for wildflowers with color that will bloom for a lot of the year. Of course, yeah. butterflies like it. I yeah. like butterflies. Yeah. Who doesn't? We love butterflies here at Sweet Bay. Some a really easy to get started with kind of plant that's a native plant that attracts a lot of butterflies, hummingbirds, bees, would be your tropical sage. I need more tropical yeah. sage because I have flamingo pink, yes. flamingo pink which yes. I love, and I would like to get some back in my life yeah. again since they ran over it. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, we're gonna grab some flamingo pink. I will tell you, I like pinks, I like blues, I like yellows. I don't think I really want red so much in the okay. front because I do have red tropical sage and in the back. And then yeah. I have um, a scarlet hibiscus up front. Sure. So I've got some good pops of red oh, already yeah, happening. Nice. Yeah. So other colors would be better, I think. Yeah. You guys have been thinking about tropical sage, but you weren't feeling the red. Look at this. Flamingo pink in honor of the flamingos returning to Pinellas. Yeah. I love these. I'm getting this. It's so... This is a big pot, but you know what? Who cares? We need lots of color. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love the back of your shirt. I didn't even see it before. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's Sweet Bay Magnolia, and it's a host to the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail. I didn't even think about the fact that Sweet Bay was probably named after the Magnolia. Yeah. <laughs> I want one of those. Yeah. Ugh, but not today. Yeah. It's a, it's a beautiful tree. It does tend to like moisture. Mm. It does a lot better in moisture. And you can really tell if you're like out in the woods or along streams or, or anything like that, that you can tell it's a sweet bay because it's silver underneath. Mm. It's really, really beautiful. So when it's like blowing in the wind, you can see those flashes of silver. Oh. And it does get those really beautiful white magnolia flowers. They're just a little bit smaller, mm. but they're still really, really, really beautiful plants. So okay, maybe yeah. one day. Yeah. So one of the things I got crushed was also woodland sage. Um, woodland? Uh, the woodland sage is more of a wetland plant. It's kind of rhizomous. Mm -hmm. um, gets pretty little purplish flowers. I loved it. it but was... I've heard from customers that it can take a little bit of both. Like it can handle some dry and some moisture. Yeah. So I think it's a fairly adaptable plant. Yeah. I think you have one left. All mine got crushed. Let's see. It was doing fine. It, Cause I know it was like a semi-shade plant. Um, but now it's going to be, it's not going to be full, full sun. It's going to be a, a lot of sun with some yeah. shade. Yeah. And I can always move it closer to bananas for shade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. The woodland sage. I think what's, I the, what's the botanical on that? The 
you mean the scientific name? Yeah. Uh, it's like something azure. Uh, salvia azure. Oh, the blue sage you mean? Blue sage, yeah. It's called okay. woodland. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or maybe Wilcox calls it woodland. I don't know. It could be. That's that's the problem with common names. <laughs> they can be easily confused because depending who you're talking to, it mm -hmm. differs from person to person. So once you start really getting into your garden, look at the botanical name. That's super, super important. I'll try to put those on the video so that you guys know what I'm talking about. But yeah, they called it woodland sage. I think little, I don't remember if Little Red Wagon ever carried it. Yeah. I was thinking of a different sage we carry. Oh yeah, but this is the one. This is the blue sage right here. Yeah. And that tends to like some dry to very dry soils. It's more commonly found in the panhandle part of the state, but it is perennial. It should come back for you year after year. But um, I've actually had quite a bit of luck with this um, in shade, believe it or not. That's where it was. It was below yeah. the Ponciana. Isn't that really interesting though? Yeah. Because it says full sun, Yeah. right? That's what it says on the sign. It says online. But because I don't have irrigation and because it's so insanely dry that this thrives more in like a shaded condition in my yard. So it's just mine, really interesting how plants can be. Mine kept reaching different. towards the sun. Now right. it was probably only getting like an hour or two yeah. in the sun. And yeah. so it was definitely reaching, um, and then it's near sprinklers, so it'll get right. sprinkled twice a week. So I would like to get that one. Okay. Because yeah. I just think the blue, I'm just a big blue and pink combo. Yeah. Kind of person. Like, guys, look at, you gotta look at this. Look at, yeah. look at that color together. Isn't that pretty? I just feel like it's so, like, cottage, romantic coloring. That's just why I like it a lot. And it's such a delicate plant, you know? And I figure even because it likes to flop over, mixed in with other tall stuff, it'll yeah. be happier. So isn't that pretty? Okay. <laughs> I have some swamp milkweed, a bunch of swamp milkweed got crushed. Yes. I still have a bunch in there. Is it worth it to plant it now because we're in October? I would say so because you'll still get that seed. Yeah. So but essentially, I, if you if you want to have a little bit more of it, or if you want to put it somewhere else, you know, eventually, mm -hmm. you can collect that seed from the plant. So to me, yeah, it's, it's worth it to plant, even have, though it might be blooming. Have this one's already bloomed, the ones you guys have here? The southeast sunflowers? No, 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 the swamp milkweed. I'm sorry. Oh, the swamp milkweeds? Yeah. They are actually going to form seed. So, so if you, okay, so if I bought these and plant them, I'm going to have pods. Soon. Yes, you'll have pods. I have pods, so I think I'm okay. So I don't think I need to buy those. I can always come back next year to get more if I feel like I didn't get enough. Yeah, it's a good, mm -hmm. I, I, my personal opinion on the milkweed is I would rather have you plant it in fall and winter because what happens is spring kind of rolls around mm -hmm. and the little bits are coming up from the soil, right? And they're already getting laid on. So if you put it in the ground in spring, the caterpillars could already be eating it down yeah. and it's not rooted. So, so you're saying get more Usually, now. even though it's not showy, it's not beautiful in the winter by any means, it does die back to the ground. It's still working on that root system mm -hmm. throughout the winter time and pre-spring. So I always recommend, even though it doesn't look very good, it's a great time to plant milkweed in the fall and winter but even for okay because i'm going to challenge you because yeah. i'm in st pete and i still got tons of monarchs yes right now so if i plant it right now they are still laying babies possibly yes um so that, would that, that be a good choice right now or wait till a little no, bit no i don't think it's terrible i mean eventually you know it slows down in my own yard my neighbor does have a very big giant milkweed that's not native but that can kind yeah. of feed them in the winter time and florida is kind of weird when it comes to the monarchs because we don't have big fluctuations in temperature yeah. to force them to migrate. So we do have year round populations. Yeah, because that's so what that's, I see in St. Pete is like, other than like when we yeah. get the coldest of cold snaps, right? There, I almost every month I see them yeah. in my garden. Yeah, they'll One usually the slow other. down. They may not be in like breeding mode at mm -hmm. that point, um, but they will still um, use plants. Um, that's a big topic. And we can always delve into that because I can suggest another plant for the monarch butterfly if you don't want to go down the non-native route. No, we're there not. There is a native milkweed that's a vine 
that they will use during the winter time as well that will hold on to its foliage um yeah. during the winter so that's that's but another another day yeah i don't need any more vines Mo monarchs and milkweeds that's that's a huge discussion we have every day at the nursery pretty much <laughs> no we People go native. Come in, yeah, yeah we're native at this household so yeah. only uh now only invasive seeds pop in my yard now yes, from tropicals yeah. from neighbors we'll, we'll get them in here at the nursery and we don't sell that plant so it definitely spreads yeah for sure okay so i've got some pink i've got some blue I love wildflowers. What else? What What else should I be thinking about? Whether it's for fall. Okay, you were showing me some liatris earlier. Oh really yeah, good. yeah. And that's purpley. Yes. And I like that. Can we go look at some liatris? Yeah. Okay, let's it go. It really depends. So as far as like the, as far as liatris goes, we sell five different species, and they all have different requirements. Um, they're all found naturally in different parts of the state. So um, my go-to really is the um, gracilis. It was so pretty. It's very, very beautiful. It's very, very easy to grow. And if you allow it to seed, you'll have these big, beautiful, long plumes of purple come up every fall in your yard. I and want it's that. A, if you're speaking about monarchs and butterflies, this is a very, very important plant for them actually when they go on their migration. So it's a great, great nectar plant for monarch butterflies. I want, I want so. it. She all the good things showed me some that's just going into bloom and yes. some of the wild areas they have back there which is actually really cool if when you come and visit because i know you will um they have some areas back where they have them wild and it's pretty it's pretty we'll come back and show yeah. you when it's all in bloom but let's go grab some grassalis and i'll show you what it looks like this is it look at this let's bring it in let's let's get that that beautiful shot look up close at the stamens and how they're like kind of whirly gig they're really, really interesting. And that's what you'll find with native plants. They're usually not giant flowers, but they're very intricate. And it's just a really interesting relationship that they have with their pollinators because essentially through evolution, the insects pick the traits of this plant. Yeah. So it's really, really neat. And how do you think that will pair from both yeah. needs, color, flopping, over <laughs> with our tropical sage. These are beautiful and these will do really really well together too. Oh good. And that's what we always strive for is to kind of plant in a way where it's right place right plant. I know there's this tendency to pick pretty things and kind of put them together hoping they all live but here at the nursery we're all about right plant right place so it's really important to look at the signage here to pick your plants. Or yeah. just come get Aaliyah <laughs> and just ask. You don't need to be a plant expert. That's no, right. you don't need. That's the great thing about natives is you don't really need to be an expert. You're always kind of experimenting. I've been working on my gardens for seven years, yeah. and I'm always experimenting and kind of changing things around, seeing things that work. I know my ones that I always go to, but I always like to change it up a little bit. So. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a little bit. We need a lot more plants, Leah. And you might be like, oh, a lot. Oh, can I get another one? Yeah. I told Ben 20 to 30 plants. He said fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, it's more about who's going to dig all the holes, which will be Yeah, me. I usually, and the other thing too, with some of these wildflowers, this is just my personal opinion, but I do like to plant thick. So I don't do the whole like one foot spacing and stuff like that i tend to plant in little clusters so groups of three four whatever i'll put a couple together a couple together a couple together so now everything's so spaced out and mm -hmm. things tend to grow in much more nicely and then you can allow those things to seed so you'll see the fall bloomers they get pretty tall mm -hmm. so the more densely you plant you know the better luck you have of these standing Not at the end of the <laughs> Cause I feel At the like end that's of the season. So that's why I feel like tapping a lot. My goldenrod, yes. it was doing so good standing yes. up, and then we got some gusty winds this last yeah. week, and they're all like, I, exactly. I'm gonna have to just go get some garden string I mean, and tie them up for right now. And still in hurricane season, so okay. it's it's unfortunate. But sometimes, yeah, we'll get those tropical storms that come in, and all these uh, flowers Ooh. that are starting to bloom in the fall, they'll flop over from the winds. So, so what yeah, the more densely you plant, usually the better. They want friends. They want friends. They want lots they of do friends. Want friends. Yeah. So we need to find more friends, Leah. I need yeah. 
This is only like five or six. It's not enough. We need to go find some other things. So we've got purple, we've got pink, we've got blues. Is there, what else might pair nicely? Also, I see something else that I had in my garden. It died out because it was too shady and I want it back again. It's the one you talked to me about like earlier. Is it the calamint? Yes. Yeah. I think that would be good on the edge. Yeah, the calamint, yes. It's because a perfect border plant. It's gonna be, so I'll turn you around so you can see it. That's one of the things is I'm gonna be planting this up against an area that goes up against the street. Yeah. And so having something low that can kind of hang out in the one side, I have that shorter um, salt and pepper that we talked about. Yes, yep. But I need something on the other end to kind of just be like, this is the end of the the wild. Yeah, this is a really nice plant. It's very, very dense. It's pretty much year round. The key that I found with this little guy is you, it'll go through this really heavy flowering period, right? Mm hmm and it'll kind of brown out after. And that's not, the plant's not dying. What's kind of happening there is when a plant flowers like this, it's putting all its energy into the seeds. Mm -hmm. So basically all that energy is going to seed production and then the leaves and the rest of the plant kind of suffer as a result. So what you want to do is once it's kind of done and it's getting kind of brown and seedy, you want to chop, you know, you can do like a halfway chop and it'll just come right back. So that's kind of the key I found with this plant in my own yard, is to just kind of trim it after a really heavy flowering period. 50% chop, got it. And, and uh, I love this plant. I wish you could be here because it just smells amazing. You yeah. just run your fingers through it and it just smells minty. I it's can smell really it. It's refreshing. I can smell plant. it right now, just standing yeah. over yonder. And it's just really easy, it's full sun. You can use it as a border plant. You can kind of shape it. it only gets like a foot and a half by a foot and a half maybe. Mm -hmm. That's it. So it's nice and compact and it can make the garden look a little more uniform. It mm -hmm. makes sense. People can look at it, it looks nice. Yeah. You know, so really, I think for this one, I don't know because you're saying plant really close and I've got actually a pretty large area to fill yeah. in. Which we might just have to do phases. Which we can is, do phases, yeah. So I can do one grouping and then kind of put this at the edge. Cause I have some swamp milkweed that's in bloom. Cause now it finally got sun. I got rid of a whole tree. So, but near it, everything's kind of like gone. So I think if I put this near it, kind of slightly back, I want to buy this, but I also kind of want to make a hedge of it. Yeah, that's, yeah. But I don't know that that makes sense with where I'm gonna have to think about that. Can we go look at some other plants? But I do want to get some. Yeah. Sure. Even if I just throw some in for now and then come back and do a whole design later. Who cares? Yeah. We are impulse buying. <laughs> this is a good, good hobby. See, here's my other idea. It's like, it could be street edge, but I have the vegetable garden and mm -hmm. I do want to create some better, like clear segregation of like, this sure. is the vegetable section. This is the wildflower section. So that it doesn't just look like stuff's happening. Yeah. That's the one thing I've just been debating about is maybe this but maybe that's a project for another time so we might hold on this one and just focus on throwing large wildflowers in for right now but it smells really good yeah, so it's it's very addictive yeah the smell and if you, you always want, want to run your fingers through it yeah well and yeah, i just think with like the bee balm because the bee balm has a minty smell and with the way my yeah. plants were i've never noticed it before but i guess because of like i had i wasn't getting a ton of airflow in the area so it was just kind of like filling so one area of my sidewalk i'd walk through and mm -hmm. it was just like a cloud of mint and this like just feels like the slightly different mint slightly and it would just be nice together but whatever let's go look at more plants come on guys that's what? similar to that the saint john's wort saint, saint john's wort no Atlantic saint john's wort. this is somewhat similar except it's a low border plant that gets the yellow flowers. Mm -hmm. um, it's not gonna have that minty smell to it by any means, but it's another kind of lowish border cool plant. Looking. But yeah, it gets is. full of little yellow flowers. I see some but black. That could be something mm -hmm. if you wanted to mix it up, like say if you did like along your border, border like three, and then you do one St. John's Fort and then three Calumet mm -hmm. St. John's Fort. Like if you wanted to break that up a little bit and have something a little bit different, for your border. I don't know. I really have no your thought at this point. Yeah. I just really want to just fill in. Fill in, yeah. So probably need more fillers than borders. Because I, I, I need to come back through 
I'm gonna use this winter to kind of come up with more of a master plan because mm -hmm. I just like to impulse buy yes. and <laughs> see what works. Um, and so I think what I want to just do is fill the space so it doesn't look like a giant gouge. At the yeah. Moment. That's probably more of the issue. Also, I just really want that sunflower that you showed me earlier. Yeah, definitely. I think y'all are going to want this sunflower too because it's really pretty. Yeah. And it's native. And a combination of native and sunflower is... Yes. Awesome. I love the sunflowers. Yeah, they're beautiful. So let's, let's go take a look at those and make everyone want to buy them. Yeah. If you wanted a statement wildflower, wow, oh wow. Look at this. This thing, look at how, look at, you can see how tall it is versus Leah. I'm five foot. <laughs> There's flowers like all the way up here. So what is that? Six and a half feet tall, maybe? Maybe, yeah. And then he's just popped up along the sprinkler head naturally. So you can kind of see like, they do like some moisture, but what I've found with stuff that likes moisture, if you don't have a lot of moisture in your area, sometimes it's not entirely a problem. You can still grow the plant. It may not just get as big. Hmm. So that's something to think about too. And I always like to tell people if this scares you, um, you can always cut this back like halfway in the summer mm -hmm. and you can keep it around like four feet, yeah. you know, instead of like the six or seven foot plant. But it is a cool background plant and it does seed. So if you want to have it in your yard somewhere else, you can always take the seed, put some down right there. And it should pop up for you. I like it. My favorite wildflower has been Coreopsis Leavenworthy, yes. like our native wildflower. Too. And this is like a giant version of it. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. Cause I like how they bob in the wind. Yeah, yeah. very and it, delicate. And it's cool cause the Coreopsis kind of will flower more spring and it will hold on through most of the season but then this comes up in the fall so it's like it's really you know it's really really pretty a nice little dash of yellow so i want to i want to try this yeah because i think where the tree was i've got like a nice giant sunny hole oh yeah that perfect like it could fill in a little bit and yeah it's not going to overshade anything but it'll be a beautiful, interesting piece. Oh, look, the flowers just want to be on camera. Hi, we think we're so pretty. Yes, you are. You are so pretty. Some of you will be coming home with me, not you, because you're in the ground. I got a little scared for a second, Leah, because I was like, she doesn't want me to take this giant thing in my car. But then I realized <laughs> yeah, you actually so have pots nice. Nice. inside of there. <laughs> so this is called Southeastern yes. Sunflower. I don't remember if we said it or not, so. But look at that, oh, okay. How many do you think I should get? How much space is it going to fill up this fall? How creative, how? I mean, if it likes the space, probably pretty quickly. I mean, this gives you an idea. This is more right here. Mm -hmm. So th this gives you an idea of the spread. Oh, within know? like a few months? Mm, or is I that over know, a year? You probably give it a year. To okay. See what happens, see how it likes the space. But if it likes the space, it will fill in. Cause it looks like this is almost like two plants. So maybe yeah. it'll get like this size yeah. for the first I year. Say, yeah, this, this is probably one. And they chopped it back, you can see, but mm -hmm. um, you can see the width on it and just like the height. So it looks so like, like one, this is like about feet, one plant and this is maybe one plant. Two feet by, I mean, look at how tall this is. Yeah, I see how tall that is. That's like a, <laughs> what is, that's gonna be like eight feet tall, nine feet tall. Yeah. That's like a Christmas tree right there. <laughs> Nothing yeah. says happy Halloween and Merry Christmas like a giant <laughs> sunflower. <laughs> Okay, I think I'll just start with one. Yeah, I'd say start with one and see if it likes the space. So we were discussing a uh, corn snake root, aka Oryngium aquatica, mm -hmm. aka marsh <laughs> marsh rattlesnake, aka blue oryngium. Like it goes by so many names. Yeah, scientific name Oryngium aquaticum. Yeah, it's this one that you always see in my yard that I'm always like, yay, blue flower. And what we were talking about is maybe adding it in because it brings in that blue, like the woodland or the coach, the sage that's blue, whatever we're gonna call it. And the pinks and the purples that this would also add like a texture difference. Yes. Cause I think that's one of the things when you plant is like you have to create color differences, but also you want texture differences. Definitely. Does this one bloom throughout the year? It doesn't bloom throughout the year, no. Mine just started blooming. I would say this is like the main time of year i would say more fall blooming that's what but i saw but i didn't know because my tree there's <laughs> other like rattlesnake masters or plants within the oryngeon family that will bloom more um like summer okay so 
the yucca folium, I believe, it's called like large snake root. It has a white flower. It's not as showy, it's just a white flower. Yeah. These ones are really unique because of the blue. That one I remember the leaves yeah. look more um, pokey. The leaves are pokey on that one. Yes. They're not straight. They they look extreme. worse than they are. That's what I remember because I touched them and I was like, but yeah. I, it can catch you off guard if you're like hooking it up and you're like, ooh. Yeah. It's a little bit pokey. So I think I'm going to add a few of these in closer to the sprinkler line because they're, it's in the name, aquatic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's aquatic ish. So I think a couple of these just to add some texture differences and you got some really nice size ones. Like yeah. You guys look down they're, here. They're There's ready like, to go on the ground for sure. I will, you know what, I, I'll, I'll take them off your hands. <laughs> I'll throw myself on that sword for you. <laughs> so this is what Leah was thinking about earlier is this would say. Yeah. And what she was saying is, is like, if you have like a ditch that most of the year is probably dry, but then floods for part mm -hmm. of a little bit of the year. Yeah, this will do really, really well in there and it'll fill in fairly quickly. And it is a very long time blooming plant. And it takes well, as you can see in these pots, you see some that are a bit taller. It takes very well to being chopped. Back. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like the tropical sage. Yeah, where you, you can, can just trim like- trim it <laughs> back and you'll get more, more blooms out of it. That's cool. That's pretty so, though. It is perennial, so eventually it will kind of like peter out later in the year, but um, throughout the growing months, it's pretty heavy flowering. Yeah. I don't have a spot for this, but <laughs> it's pretty. Yeah. I would definitely say if you if you have that kind of, because I know a lot of people have like that ditch, mm -hmm. that's like the rain runoff yeah, ditch. The rain runoff. Yep. And it's always like, what do you plant in there? Cause yeah, you want to put something pretty. You just don't want like turf grass in there. You want something that yeah. would thrive. And I feel like this that's like the sneaky place that like uh, evil invasive torpedo grass likes oh, to go maybe because yeah, they can handle yes. like the water and being yes. flooded underwater. But then, so like you want to get something in to kind of keep yeah. that nonsense out. So that's cool. That's when like some of these natives that are a bit more aggressive can really come in handy because mm -hmm. they can actually push out or at least kind of stop the invasive spread of things yeah. like the Brazilian pepper and all that nasty stuff. So um, sometimes you want these aggressive natives in certain spots because it can really help with that. Because not everybody's out in their yard looking for like little Brazilian pepper plants coming up or little carrot wood plants coming up. And those hard. things, once they go, they are pain. they are very hard to get rid of and they yes. grow very quickly. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. They all like to poop them. Yes. spots oh, in my yard. Yeah. Yeah. I. That's probably the number one invasive that I get in my yard year round is carrot wood. Oh. I am constantly pulling up carrot wood. I can always tell it because it's, it's a combination of carrot wood, Brazilian pepper, then our native fire bush, and our native Virginia creeper. It's like the yeah. four. Oh yeah, Virginia creeper those for sure. Those four yeah. are always like yeah. together. <laughs> so when, once I find one, I find all of them right yeah. there because the birds ate them and they pooped them all out. Yep. All right, so I've got a bit I need. Oh, my cart is not full yet, Leah, so we must find more plants. What else should I get? Um, just more of the same? Yeah, yeah, you can always do more. I mean, I would... Well, I kind of wiped you out of a couple. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to get more Liatras, I mean, you can't go wrong with that, or maybe... But what will hold it up? Well, that's where we'll dive into grasses. Oh. Grasses, uh, well... I don't know if I want to go into grasses yet. As far as grasses go with the wildflowers, they can do a lot of good with keeping stuff held up. So that could be another. I'm, I want to wait till I kind of figure out the design for up front. Cause yeah. this is like, I can put it in, they'll reseed places and then I won't feel bad if mm -hmm. I'm like, this spot's now something else. Hmm. I, cause I kind of just want to do like a big old clumping of wildflowers right mm -hmm. now. What else could I grab? So Leah and I were chatting off camera. They're getting more plants in. Yes, FYI. So I think I'm just gonna get a couple more plants today and then I'm gonna come back in when we got more tropical sage, more liatris yeah. for filling in. And I'll also take some time to design. I'll take you along for the journey. You know I will. And we'll come back. We'll come back in like two weeks or so. Yeah. And also there'll be more stuff blooming, which is more funsies. Yeah, there'll be a lot of stuff really flowering along the property, lots of beautiful fall blooming, lots of liatras, lots of golden rods, stuff like that. So but it'll be nice. The thing what we're going to grab is we're going to grab a tea bush. We're doing it. Yeah. We're going to grab a couple button sages and we're going to grab a salt and pepper, the tall type. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably about it. And then we can come back later for some more color. Sounds good. 
Okay, let's go grab that. <laughs> let's take this from the other video I shot, guys. <laughs> so we got our tea bush. Oh, this one's amazing. It's so pretty. Look at that silver tone. This is gonna be so gorgeous. And I need a button sage. Oh, don't knock over the other plants I used. That'll be, look at that. Guys, are you liking this color palette? I'm liking this. <laughs> We're also gonna grab the turbina and the tall salt and pepper. Hey guys, look at that. All right, hand dragging cart. Whee! Guys, I think we need to buy another one. <laughs> So not buying any of these. You're not buying these? Okay. No, that was just no for the these. video. Got it. So just these. Just these, got it. <laughs> okay. Well, a big thank you to Sweet Bay and of course, Leah, who spent so much time with me helping me pick out all these wonderful plants. If you want to check out Sweet Bay, I'll leave a link down in the description and in a pinned comment. And if you're thinking about getting into native plants and you want to know some good ones to start for beginners, check out this video right here. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.